guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an epic review of what I think are all the best digital nomad bags. Now I know a lot of you watching these videos are either current nomads or aspiring nomads and so probably what bag you take is a big decision for you. Depending on how minimalist you travel, you might want to take one of these bags as your entire um, luggage and use it as hand luggage or this might be just like a day bag for you that you're using to kind of go to the office or the gym or like your daily life. So I've tried to select ones that are marketed at Nomads um, but also that I think would be really good for the needs that I have as a digital nomad. Um, I've got four bags with me today, um, all of which have been sent to me for review. And then also at the end, I'm going to be adding on one more, which is waiting for me when I get to America. So the first one is Cabin Zero. This is a bag which I have actually had for at least a year, maybe longer. Um, they sent it to me a really long time ago. You will have seen it in a bunch of my Instagrams, but I wanted to include it today because it is a digital nomad targeted bag um, and I wanted to include it in the review. So. The thing about this bag that it's most known for is it's called Cabin Zero because it's super light and it is really, really light. Um, so if you're looking to really cut down on your luggage allowance, then this is gonna be the one for you. Um, the downside of it is that because of that, it's quite squishy. You'll see some of the ones later on have a lot of structure. They have a lot of pockets. This one is a bit more light on pockets and structure, but that's what you get by making the bag super light. So. This one has a top handle and a side handle. Um, there is um, a zip on the front, so you have this like front pocket, which to be honest, I don't use, but I guess it depends what kind of stuff you're traveling with. Um, and then it has a big main inside pocket. It's gonna be a bit dirty, I'm sorry. Like I said, I've been using it for at least a year. Um, so then inside it has this laptop um, area, which is great. And then it has um, this like mesh flap one. And there's actually also another one in here. So like this whole part of the bag is another one of those skinny, um, this is a zip that goes down into the bottom of the bag. So it does have several pockets. You know, it's got the one on the front, two inside and the laptop pocket, but it's not like crazy pocket heavy like some of the other ones but it's amazing how much you can fit in this. Um, the cool thing about Cabin Zero is that they do loads of different colors and loads of different sizes. So they can go like massive if you want a really massive one. Um, this one is kind of an intermediary size. So I have used this for like a week in Europe. By the time you put packing cubes, like it's actually quite fat. Um, so I can fit packing cubes in, a couple of pairs of shoes, my laptop, my tech, I can fit a lot in this bag and because it's so light, um, it doesn't really add to your weight, like a weight limit very much. It also has these clips on the side, which I think are kind of for compression so that you can squish your stuff up or so that you can have like a jacket or a yoga mat kind of tucked in the side between the straps. I don't really ever have these closed particularly. Um, and it also opens almost entirely flat, which is called clamshell. I now know having all done all of this bag research. Um, and a lot of people, that's something that they want. For me, I mostly just use it as a backpack. I don't normally open it this entirely much. Um, but the Cabin Zero is great because it's super light. The only thing that I specifically don't like about it, apart from that it's not big on pockets, is that I find this fabric to be really scratchy. <laughs> Um, and maybe I just have really sensitive skin, but I'm often in warm countries, so I just have a strappy top and I find it's just really rough against my skin. So it kind of, I quite often get like flared up, um, but that's just a small thing. I'm sure they've done it so that it's grippy, but I find it just to be a little bit scratchy. So that is the Cabin Zero, very well loved, and I will definitely continue to be using this. So next is the one that is most similar to the Cabin Zero and that is from In Case. Now this is the EO travel backpack. Um, you can see it's similar to the Cabin Zero in that it's kind of that uh, fabric-y and it's like quite squarey. Um, the thing that's different with this is that it's very structured. You can see it's like really holding its square shape. I'll try and have a little bit more space. But it's the same on the front. It's got a zip which goes sideways instead of vertical, but basically the same thing. Um, this pocket is only downwards. There's no upwards. Um, so you can just put a few bits in the front, but I don't know how much you'll use that. These straps are really soft. So they're better than the Cabin Zero in that respect. Um, and it's got this kind of big like padding on the back. Um, it has the side clips, the same as the Cabin Zero does. Similar, you can like put a jacket in and it's got the side handle and the top handle all the same. Um, but where this starts to get really different is all the different pockets. So it has this one on the front, which you would use for kind of like 
pens, papers, notebooks, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's got a couple of springy ones down the bottom and also on this other side. So it's got a double there and round here. That's the front pocket. And then the middle pocket goes all the way around and actually opens out entirely like a big suitcase, which is pretty awesome. So this is kind of like built-in packing cubes almost. Um, so you can put a bunch of stuff in both of these and I think that's pretty fab. So this is like basically a suitcase backpack, which is kind of amazing. Um, and the other thing, which for me is the best thing about this, is that it's expandable. So you pull this one all the way around um, and you get a bunch of extra width. So if I just show you it now, like this, it's got all of this extra. So this is all entirely new, that was compressed in before. So now you've got the front one for like papers and then this expandy one and then the laptop one, which I haven't got to yet. So now when you open this out, this whole compartment is really huge. So that compartment is just entirely new from the expansion. And I think you could fit a lot in here. Um, probably about the same as the Cabin Zero. The thing that's a bit frustrating with this though is these side things because to do the expansion you have to kind of fuss all the way like round through them um, and it means that I find the whole bag a bit confusing like which zip goes in which direction and you kind of have to go through all these clips so it's not super user friendly. So that's the first pocket and the second pocket. The third one is the laptop pocket and this is super fancy because it's like velvety inside. Um, again, it opens all the way down both sides. So as demonstrated, it kind of falls open in this massive like flat situation. Um, I don't know how useful that would be um, because you kind of have it and then it's like fully open. But anyway, maybe that really appeals to you. Um, and then the laptop pocket here, I don't know if you can see, it's like all velvety. Um, so your laptop goes in here. So that's pretty cool. And then there's kind of just not much here, just like this one extra. So I guess the thing that's good about this one is that you can have your laptop in there and then maybe also a charger, but it's quite a skinny pocket. You're probably gonna have most things in that main expandable section and in the kind of paper section in the front, that it's heavier than the Cabin Zero. It's probably still the next lightest because it's this fabric, um, but it's really noticeable how much it weighs compared to the Cabin Zero, which is just like insanely light. Ah, and I nearly forgot on the in case, it does have a sneaky little secret pocket here, kind of under the handle. So if you go into there, there's this little tiny one, which is also velvet lined. So I'm guessing that's kind of for your phone um, or some things that you just want to get to really easily. Um, so it does have that extra one as well. So it's got the front one that's kind of papers, the little sneaky one, the main one, which is expandable, and then the laptop one at the back. So it's got a lot of different sections. Um, you can compress it with the side straps. Um, it's kind of a good in-between if you want something that has the look of a Cabin Zero but is a bit more detailed thought out with pockets of like the velvety bit and the side bits and all that kind of thing. Okay, so next up is the one which Ed, my husband, was most excited about and that is the Peak. This one, um, another channel that I highly recommend is Chase Reeves and he reviews all of these bags as well in a ton of detail. His channel is exclusively bag reviews, which you think you don't want to watch, but oh my goodness, you will spend a whole day watching his bag reviews. And this one he said looked kind of like a jetpack and I totally agree. When you're wearing it, it looks very kind of spacey. So this one is designed mostly for photographers, which you will see when I get to the inside part. Um, again, it's got a side handle and a vertical handle. The side handle isn't in the middle so it's kind of unbalanced but I mean I guess you just kind of hold it in the middle um, it has water uh, water bottle pockets which none of the other bags so far have had so that is a nice extra and this bag is so well thought through so much detail has gone into it so it has things like these little hooks you like unhook and put through this little hook here um, so that it's really secure so you kind of pull them off there loop them through and plug them back in. Um, and then it means that no one can open the zip. It's kind of like a lock for the zip, which is pretty clever. Um, and there's lots of things like that. For example, the handles actually rotate on a, on a button on the inside so that you can have it like exactly to kind of fit your body. So they're really, really well thought through. There's so many details. It's also got a, um, 
slidey bit here that your um, luggage, like rolly luggage can go through so that you can be really just like shove it on the top of your luggage. So it's got lots of details like that, which the other two didn't have, but that means that it's heavier um, and it's also smaller. You can see you're not gonna fit as much in this as you are in the other two, which felt like you could fit a lot. Um, so I would say this is more of a day bag, like taking your laptop to the office, but it depends how minimalist you are. I mean, maybe you can fit all your hand luggage in this. So to get into the compartments, um, this one has got this really cool, like innovative pull design, very fancy. Um, and it means that you can kind of choose how tight it is depending on how full it is. So if it's super full, maybe you'll just be on this top part or if it's really empty, like now you can go all the way down to the bottom. Very cool. Um, and it's really beautifully designed, like this logo, logo goals. Um, and then inside, you can't really see much looking at it from this way. Like I said, this one is designed for photographers. So it feels like you wouldn't use it much from the top. The way it's designed to be used is from the side. Just need to undo my super secure locking system. Thank you for inventing that peak. Um, so these you open at the side. Isn't that crazy? Um, and that is because they're thinking it's for photographers mostly. So then in here you have these like shelves which will have lenses in. Um, the shelves are totally optional. They Velcro on. I think there's different types that you can get um, and you can move them around so you can have like the shelves all facing upwards. If you want a bigger gap, you know, they move around. But essentially they're thinking that you'll have your lenses in here. How we've been using it the past few days when we've been testing it is just using it as compartments. So I have like my laptop charger down here and then like a pair of shoes in here and kind of use them as shelving, which is quite cool because it means that normally where you just have a big backpack, it's all like separate compartments. But obviously you might just want to take those out and have it as a backpack shape. And then on both of the flaps, it's got all these extra pockets. Inside the pocket, there's more pockets. So, I mean, this bag is heavy on the pockets. It's really fancy made, like everything feels very beautiful fabric, all that kind of thing. And the same on the other side, it opens up. And then you have this pocket inside and then inside the pocket, there's some pockets. So this is for the people who are really into like organizing all your different stuff in all different places. So this is intense on the pockets. And that was actually weirdly the thing that um, we didn't like about it as much when we were using it, is that if you want to get to your house keys, you're like, okay, I open the side thing, then I open the mini side thing, and then there's my keys in there. And which one of the five is it in? So I think this bag is really good if you're really organized with your pockets, like again, you know, for photographers or something like that, and you want to have all the separate SD cards. But if like us, you're a bit more kind of throw it in your bag and want to grab it quickly, then maybe this isn't going to be as much for you. I think this is a very detailed one. I think it's also probably pretty waterproof, this fabric. I think it's going to be quite waterproof and the zips also will kind of enclose on themselves. So I think it's going to be very waterproof, which again, if you have expensive equipment inside, then you don't want that to get damaged. I certainly don't think this is exclusively for photographers, by the way. I think any nomad who is very organized, wants everything in its place, it would be perfect for. Um, and in my opinion, I think it's probably the best looking one that I've got here with me today. I really, really like the style of it. It looks very like grown up and formal and classy. The other ones I've done so far are a bit more casual. So it kind of depends what vibe you're going for in that respect. And of course, I should also show you the laptop pocket. So that was the main bit. But then along the back, there is a laptop pocket in here. Um, this has a like short, kind of about to hear little pocket on the top, that one. And then it has the main laptop pocket, which goes obviously all the way down. It's very well thought out. So the laptop stops before the bottom. So the laptop kind of goes to about here. So that if you drop your bag on the floor, you're not gonna get shock waves through your laptop. It just stops a bit early, which is really nice. So really impressed with this one, very beautiful design. And then finally, for the ones that I've got with me today, before the bonus one on the end, this is from Tom Bin. Um, this is a very well-known kind of outdoorsy, but also nomad-y brand. So the thing that is better about this one, I think, than the Peak for our use is that most of the pockets are on the outside. So that is less secure if you have valuable things. And the cool thing about the Peak is that they're locked behind several other zips. So people aren't gonna be able to just like open this and slip their hand in. But for us, 
us, we really like to have the pockets on the outside because it's kind of quicker. You have to open less compartments to get to everything. So this one has got all these pockets on the outside. So you can have, you know, your phone in one, your keys in one, kind of everything really organized and separate. They intend for this front one here to be for your water bottle, which is so that it's balanced on the center of your back so that you don't have like one bottle on one side, which I think is very clever. So that's supposed to be for the water bottle there in the middle. Um, and then the rest are kind of for little bits and pieces. So I think you could have like a charger in here or all separate things, which is really nice. The fabric on this, I don't know for sure, but I'm sh this must be waterproof because it feels like very good fabric. These zips are so chunky, like you're not gonna have any trouble with the zips. The thing with Tom Bin is that you can buy a bunch of extra add-ons if you want. So they have sent me a separate laptop case which kind of attaches in, so it's sort of anti-theft, but really, really nice and padded. And these you say which exact laptop size that you have. So this one fits my 13 inch MacBook Pro. Um, but it means that it has all these little like tags and these ones here so that you can attach whatever accessories on you want. So they sent me the laptop case accessory and also then this um, like cables accessory. So you can attach them on with like all these little clips and bits and pieces, clips on both ends. The thing with Tom Bin is that it's very customizable, which is good and bad because it means you will spend money on the accessories but it does mean that you can really customize how you want your bag and you're not paying for things that you're not going to use so you can choose exactly what format you want it and they do a ton of different accessories so on the inside we've got the laptop case and if you weren't to know imagine you were just going hiking then you wouldn't buy the laptop case and then there's no like laptop area so it kind of depends what you're looking for you can totally customize the bag depending on what kind of person you are and then on the inside, there's actually not really any pockets, but that's because you can get the accessories. So there's this one pocket that's kind of a elastic -y one on the front panel, but there's no pockets on the back panel. So that's obviously why you get the laptop case um, if you're using it for a laptop. I also really like the design of this, that it's got this kind of checkered fabric on the inside. I think it looks really cool. And it's all waterproofy, so it's very good quality materials. I feel like this bag is never gonna break or never gonna run out. It just seems like it will go for years and years and years. Um, it also does have a waist strap. So again, that's a bonus, which some of the others don't have. Um, so I would say this is more of a kind of, a bit more of an outdoorsy one, maybe a bit more masculine, um, but great if you want everything available to you on the outside um, with really nice quality fancy zips. So welcome to America. In true nomad style, some of the backpacks were delivered to me in England and then one has also come to me here in America. So the final one I have to show you of the five is the Tortuga. Now, these guys sponsor a lot of nomad podcasts, nomad blogs, so they are kind of the nomad favourite in my opinion. Um, and I can see why. This one has got tons of pockets. It's got this great water holder um, and it's quite an outdoorsy look. My favorite thing about it is that it's expandable. So I will show you, this one has actually got all my stuff in it. So hopefully this is gonna be an extra good demo of how much you can fit in it and how it all works. So it has this little pocket on the front, which is about half depth. So I've got some kind of random things in here like headache pills, my passport, kind of just bits and pieces. Then this front pocket is kind of the pocket that's got the most little pockets and things inside. So it's got some, a bunch of little ones, a kind of medium one. It's also got a key holder. And I guess this would probably be the best pocket for a passport, like a not quite secret pocket, but at least it's a zip inside a zip. Um, so I really like this for kind of organizing so many different bits and pieces. Then there's the expandable bit, which I will show you in a minute. Then the main pocket um, is really big, which is good and bad. It's good if you want to do like a week away trip, but it's kind of bad if you're using it just every day because I find it a bit too big because the whole thing is so deep. So I have put in one of these, which is the Cocoon Gridit, which I love, where you can have all your bits um, kind of held separately so they're not just in this kind of big backpack. I actually use this in all of the backpacks but I find it especially useful in this one because the main area is so big. But this is where the big part comes in useful because it actually zips all the way round so that it is a like full flat pack suitcase which is super cool. So if you want to do like a trip away you've got this netting side and then you've got a kind of suitcasey side um, and this is where the expansion comes in. So many zips. 
and then you can expand it out. You see how much, this much expansion, really cool. So then that is where this netting pocket goes into the expansion one. So you can actually get a lot in that if you wanna do it like proper suitcase style. And if you're a minimalist traveler, then that would probably be enough for you. I think you could use this bag just for your whole life because it does expand really far. Like it has quite a lot of space um, and it's so big. Um, like vertically, it's kind of this big square shape. So I think this would probably be enough for you if you want it just as your only bag. And then the last pocket at the back is the laptop one. Um, so it has like these two separate laptop sections with the Velcro. My laptop's not in there right now because I'm using it to record this video. Um, but yeah, so you just have the two separate little laptop th things. This pocket I do find to be really big in fact the whole bag because it's like a big rigid square and I guess I'm just quite small it kind of sits away from my back and it's quite like comes up really high comes up really low so it's more of like a kind of big hiking like maybe a man's bag um, they do a bunch of different versions so if this wasn't for you it definitely doesn't mean that Tortuga isn't for you and the same for all the different brands they all do lots of different types and colors and this is kind of just an introduction to the quality and thoughtfulness of each bag but then on the back it's got you know all the usual kind of outdoorsy straps and breathability all that kind of stuff um, the thing that's cool about the Tortuga ones is they've got loads of little extra like hooks and this detaches, like there's lots of different bits and pieces. The final thing that's cool about this one is that it does have a waist strap as well, which detaches. So when it arrived, these were like attached on here, obviously. Um, I don't need a waist strap for my normal life, but if you're going hiking or something, then it's cool that it's detachable. So you don't have to just live with it. You can just put them on whenever you need. And they've got little pockets and stuff on them which is really cool so you can have like little bits and pieces very easy access on your hips. The biggest downside for me of this bag is that it's a bit big and a bit heavy because it's so well made it's quite heavy um, whereas my Cabin Zero the best thing about it is that it just weighs absolutely nothing so it doesn't have very many pockets but it weighs almost nothing so if you're someone who's not super pockety or you're someone who's really close to the weight limit then this is going to be a better one for you. And in comparison to the Tom Bin, if I can put them both on screen, the Tom Bin is definitely smaller. It's less kind of foxy. So it fits much smaller on your back. This bag probably fits me better like as a body size, um, but this one obviously fits a lot more stuff. And this one has more, has the expansion, which is really cool. So this is kind of a better suitcasey one, but this is more of like a day bag. And, and obviously the looks are quite different. I think this is more like outdoorsy. This is a bit more kind of hipster office-y. So, it depends really what you're looking for. So that is my review of the five top Nomad backpacks. I'm sure there are others that you want me to review. So let me know in the comments if there's anyone you want me to reach out for and do a review on their bag as well. Overall, I love all of them for different reasons. They all have different pros and cons. So it really depends what you're looking for. For me, the Cabin Zero is the best for weight limit if you're not super fussed about having tons of pockets because it's so light and you can fit tons in it just cramming everything in because there's no zips or pockets or structure or anything. Um, the Tom Bin is the best made one. It's really beautiful quality. It's very good for kind of outdoorsy. It's a nice compact size. Um, and it has a lot of little extra add-on accessories that you can buy. The Tortuga is great because it's expandable, so that seems like a very good, if you want to compromise between one that's good for a week and one that's good for a day, then that one's really cool for that. The in-case, I think, looks the most um, kind of young and smart and like hipstery. I could kind of imagine you carrying it around London. And it also has the expansion and the suitcase style, the same as the Tortuga. And the Peak, which I think is the best looking. It's very chic, very modern and amazing for photographers. So it really depends what you're looking for. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment with which is your favourite backpack. Thank you so much to all of the brands for sending me these bags to review. I love them all for different reasons and I don't know how I'm going to choose which one to use on a daily basis. I'm probably going to have to rotate once a week. Um, thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I will see you next week. Bye!